seen the recent updates on Reddit, the blacklisting, the blackmailing, and many other nefarious things. But in the past 24 hours, the situation on Reddit has got so much worse. And honestly, I have never seen Reddit in a worse state in my life. To give a quick recap on the entire situation, there were loads and loads of subreddits that all agreed to close their doors, to black out, to lock access to the majority of the public so they couldn't log onto the subreddits. This was in protest to some API changes that people just weren't happy with. This was subreddits like the live stream fail subreddits where everyone goes to laugh at XQC and Forzen, uh, r slash Canada, r slash PC gaming where people post their PC builds and then cry. And this really impacted Reddit as a whole because over 60% of the entire website basically went dark. If you tried to go onto a subreddit that was locked, it would basically say you need moderator access. Even my subreddit, r parasitical, which is mostly reserved to people taking screenshots of unsubscribing to this channel, acting like they've done something. That subreddit locked down as well. Now, apparently a lot of this hatred stemmed from the fact that Reddit needed more money for their tech sector, but it's unconfirmed what they'd be using the extra money for. So people were theorizing that Reddit were actually going to integrate AI into their platform, similar to other platforms like Snapchat and Discord. Now, the biggest change is the API. The problem is, before it was free, but now Reddit was basically forcing people to pay for it. This is stuff like bots, services, plugins, Chrome extensions, anything to make the browsing experience on Reddit a lot more smoother and a lot more stable. Now, keep in mind, a lot of people that moderate subreddits and do all the kind of like managing stuff, I, I know the janitor joke, they do it for free, but they literally do it for free. Now, the thing is, these API changes that Reddit were doing, they wouldn't be too much of a problem if the pricing was fair. But the problem is, some of the people that are running popular APIs, like for example, Apollo, would have had to have paid 20 million a year just to keep their services running. And I'm just saying, paying one fifth of what XQC got paid to join Kick a year, that's not a great deal. The funny thing is, as is tradition, this is probably a move done by other companies because they, they all seem to copy each other. Like for example, Twitter, they actually had an API and they pulled it. So third party services, they wouldn't work anymore because they weren't funding Elon Musk. So Twitter had a free API and then afterwards to use the same API, you had to pay money for it. And that's why the subreddits went dark because people didn't want to pay a stupid amount of money just to be able to use something that previously was completely free. Now this blackout lasted for a powerful two days. For 48 hours, it doesn't sound that great of a blackout, but to be fair, a lot of subreddits actually, you know, dig their heels in and actually said, we're going to stay dark and close our doors indefinitely. Now, the top people at Reddit, one of them, people keep saying looks like me for some reason. Stop, stop saying that. He looks nothing like me. They were basically saying, we don't care. We're going to do the change anyway. Cry as much as you want. But the blackout actually caused a lot more chaos than they expected. And subreddits like Livestream Fails, the funny XQC Hassan Forzen dedicated fan base, they wanted to stay closed indefinitely until the API changes were reverted. Well, they basically got threatened to open their doors again, saying that they received a threatening message from Reddit admins. I don't know what kind of threatening message they would have got from Reddit admins. Maybe something like, I don't know, you can't gift gold for a week or something. So that's pretty much a recap of everything that's happened, but there have been some more juicy developments. Like, for example, how a hacking group called Black Cat during the blackout gained access to around 80 gigabytes of sensitive internal documents. Apparently, they did like some kind of phishing scam back in February, and apparently they got access access to one of the Reddit workers' phones and demanded like $4.5 million from them. And also, of course, to reverse the API changes. That was the big thing. So they basically hacked to Reddit just to say to them, Let, let's reverse it. Come on, come on. And if not, if not, We'll, we'll, we'll leak all your data online. We're not, we're not bastards. You even have the CTO of Reddit, which is like, that is the most powerful thing I've heard in my life, saying you are the CTO of Reddit. That's only something I, I can dream a, a title to attain of. He basically confirmed that, yeah, it was stolen. Apparently it was internal documents, codes, dashboards, business systems, a lot of precious things. Also, it was probably a list of all the NSFW subreddits they visited as well, but they didn't want to include that. Now, this is where Reddit gets a little bit red so they closed their doors, they shut down all the subreddits. Unfortunately, that didn't work. Reddit took the battering ram and forced them to reopen their subreddits. So Reddit has found another way to protest. And like I said, it is just the most Reddit thing you can think of. So a new subreddit has recently formed, basically just made entirely out of spite for the API changes and the fact that closed subreddits are forced to be opened. And the only thing that you're allowed to post on there is pictures of John Oliver. You know, the, the, the TV funny man, but he's like British. 
Apparently, you are only allowed to post sexy pictures of John Oliver. So a lot of the subreddits that were like forced to open again, they're only posting John Oliver. And even John Oliver got involved on Twitter basically congratulating these guys. Apparently, the art subreddit will only allow uh, sexy drawings of John Oliver. The Pokemon Go subreddit will only allow pictures of Pikachu, Spark, and of course, <laughs> John Oliver. So yeah, Reddit protested in the most Reddit way imaginable. At the minute, we're kind of at a deadlock. Nothing's really happening either way. But overall, it's it's just such a it's such a moronic situation. Of course you would use John Oliver to, to, to protest. <laughs> oh, man. But it doesn't end there. There has been some huge updates to the video. For example, the CEO of Reddit, Steve Huffman, basically went on to say, third-party apps don't add any value to Reddit. Which, if anything, is like the biggest copium I've heard in my entire life. Third-party apps usually help, if not carry, an entire service. All right, I want to give you an example. It might be a bit of a slight reach. Imagine if Bethesda, for example, that released Elder Scrolls, Fallout, and the upcoming Starfield that I'm sure is going to be kind of mid. Imagine if they said, we're going to pull all mod support. So any mod you upload, we're going to take it down. Because we at Bethesda, we personally believe that mods don't add anything into the game. Despite the fact that when every single Bethesda game drops, it is a complete buggy mess day one, probably for the first couple months. And while the employees are scrambling to do anything, the community basically does the job for them with these huge fan patches, quality of life updates, anything to basically make the game more playable and later down the road more enjoyable. I do want to say like it's a bit ironic. Ironic. I do think the surname Huffman is very fitting for this guy because non-stop he's just been huffing copium since the entire blackout. He went on to double down saying the API change is completely fair, saying they need to pay for this. That is fair. I'll be honest, I'm getting a little bit, just a smidgen, a smidgen of Heath Ledger Joker vibes here. He's probably smacking his lips during the press conference while he was saying all of this. I also imagine there was a huge pile of money burning behind him and it just goes, it's not about the money. <laughs> It's about sending a message. The most concerning thing about this whole situation, though, is like I mentioned earlier on in the video, there are very popular third party apps like Apollo that are basically shutting down because they would have had to pay, you know, $20 million. But that being said, some other Reddit plugins are actually getting a pass from Reddit. Like, for example, Red Reader and Dystopia. And they've gone on to say that the only reason they're keeping them around is because they add value to the site. And this is the problem, right? You're basically saying people have to pay to keep Reddit running because, you know, it's not a free service. Service, but then you are giving an exemption to other APIs, to, to other platforms and plugins. I want to put a thought in your head. Imagine if you made a really good Fallout 4 mod, something that was like a fan patch that fixed every single quest, every single bug, and then it added a bunch of quality of life improvements. And then it got pulled by Todd Howard, and instead his son put a mod on the store, and it was just like a cheeseburger in the game or something. The irony is they're basically forcing apps like Apollo and RIF to shut down, but, you know, they basically do the same thing as the two apps I just mentioned previously. So in my opinion, there's clearly like some kind of favoritism going on here, some kind of like backroom deals behind the scenes. It's a little bit shady how some apps are being forced to close, but then others, they're basically being funded by Reddit. I know this is a bit off topic, but one of the saddest things about this whole situation is whenever I log onto Twitter, I see people at me saying I look a little bit like the CEO, Steve Huffman. And it gets even more sad when people like Critical would basically just insult the guy's appearance. This is a picture of the Reddit CEO. I always like to bring up an image of him now because I just can't can't believe that he literally looks like the mental image anyone puts in their head when they hear the term Redditor. Now, you might remember earlier on in the video where I talked about the Reddit mods basically being threatened to keep the subreddits open, and if not, there'd be dire consequences. Well, apparently, some of those consequences were they'd lose their mod status. That's it. I thought there'd be a huge ploy or something, like they'd get the subreddit shut down, but apparently they were gonna like demod them and then replace them with new mods straight from Reddit. And the thing is, I don't I don't think you understand how comedically hilarious it is that the reason why most of them reopened is because they were gonna lose their moderation status. The one little bit of authority and power they had in their entire life. That they woke up probably in bed sweats thinking, oh my god, I can't ban someone for disagreeing with me in an argument. Now, power hungry moderators are not not exclusive to Reddit. They are all over the entire internet. Gary's mod, uh, I, I can't think of any other examples. But let, let's just say Gary's mod five more times. But on Reddit, the amount of authority and ego tripping is so concentrated, it is unreal. You know the meme of like the Doomer Wojak and he sat in front of his computer looking really sad? The only time they would get a smidgen of a smile on their face is when they time someone out for having a different opinion to them. I think to end this video, I'm going to give you a timeless statement that Mahatma Gandhi said himself. Asking a Reddit mod to stay away from Reddit for 48 hours is like asking a Twitter user to not have a dog shit opinion for 48 hours. Thank you for watching.